Alrighty, hey guys, Mitch Games 24 7 here today with another video for you guys. And today, what we have is our very first podcast. So I'm not actually sure what we're going to call this podcast. I know you guys will see whatever the fuck it's called in the title. But uh, yeah, so this is our first podcast. And essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting on different guests each week. And it's going to be sponsors who are going to be the guests. And then we're occasionally going to get on special guests as well who are other YouTubers and whatnot. So, anyways, I am joined by It's Untold. And Blaze Drake, if you guys haven't already checked them out, their links are going to be in the description. But uh, yeah, so we've got a little podcast here, and we've got a lot of interesting things to talk about today. So we're going to get right on into it. So if you guys want to say hello or g'day or whatever you guys say over in the Hello. States, Howdy. Is that, is that really what you say? That's no, <laughs> it's just a stereotype. Uh, okay. All right. Well, um, okay. Well, here's the first topic. I figured, fuck, we've got to do something related to gaming. So uh, I'm going to start this one off with uh, female streamers dominating Fortnite. Oh, so I'll, I'll, I'll give my piece first. So first, I, I just want to go out and say that I love a lot of female streamers. I think there's a lot of talented female streamers in the Fortnite <coughs> community. There, there is. Um, but, but I'm a little, I'm a little bit salty. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit fucking salty. Because I'm like, where the fuck are my viewers? Why do you have a thousand watching when you can't even win the fucking game? Because the Fortnite community is filled with fucking horny kids, man. I'm telling you, every fucking <laughs> chat I go in that is a fucking female chat is there's legit. You can't even go 20 seconds without fucking little Jimmy sitting in there fucking just being like, Oh, you're so cute. It doesn't matter if you suck at the game because you're cute. But when I fucking play the game and I die and I don't have 20 kills, fucking trash, kill yourself, can't be embarrassed, mum should have fucking swallowed. And I'm like... This is fucking double standards. This is sexist. I feel I feel personally attacked. I feel quite upset about it. It is bullying. That's all it is. Like I'm gonna Keaton Jones this shit fucking fifty eight thousand dollar payout. Like that's that's what's gonna happen eventually. So fucking be careful. You know you you might make me rich. But uh, what do you guys think on this whole fucking this whole debacle? Well, uh, I can agree with like some some women are really good at a uh, really good at the game, and then others are just just view attractors like it's 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 hard to explain but sometimes you can go on youtube gaming and you can see how like female streamers are on the come up like you you go through I, i'm sure you do the same Mitch, where you just go through youtube gaming seeing like mm -hmm. competition just seeing like what you have to deal with and like i i can like kind of tell sometimes when a female streamer is like I'd, on the come up i'd like to point out that um i find this really sad and really shallow of a lot of people in the community but uh i'll see like some some chicks who stream who are like not super 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 attractive and i'll see them down at like 10 viewers yeah but then you see somebody who's like i don't know like an 8 out of 10 for example and here she is at like fucking boom like 200 fucking viewers and then fucking boom 500 viewers and i'm like okay and I remember I was streaming the other day, and I got, like, five wins in, like, the space of, like, two hours. And I was like, well, fuck, I, I'm, I'm gunning it right now. Like, we were doing well, like, literally, like, 25 um, kill wins, obviously, and it was pretty fucking good. And I had less viewers than ever. And I was like, well, okay, what do people want to watch me for? And I, and I, I don't expect all the viewers in the world, and I'm not, I'm not trying to complain about that, but... It just feel, it's really discouraging and really like demotivating. I'm like, well, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not that I am doing anything wrong. It's it's not like nobody's doing anything wrong. I'm not gonna see, but you're wrong about that. Be... So I think we're looking oh. at this all wrong. Okay, so we're looking at it as if like all these girls being big at streaming is a bad thing, when to get a pair of breasts is only two thousand five hundred dollars. I think. We should all just get some tits, you know, grow out our hair a little bit more. And I think we're all set. I think we're looking at this completely wrong. No, my jawline's too strong. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Fuck, we've been to LA. Let's just get some titties, all right? No, but, like, the whole female streamer thing, like I was saying, you can see when, like, they start streaming because, like, uh, who, who is this girl? There's this girl. She gets, like, she puts her face in all of her thumbnails, but she streams off PS4 without a face cam. That's what pisses me off. It's because... Oh, uh, okay, so like... So it's sort of like a clickbait thing where it's like, oh, come watch me stream, here I am in the thumbnail, and you click on it, and it's like, 
The, where the fuck are you? Well, see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's not the. It's. It's not the fact that they put their face in the thumbnail because I do the same thing. Um, <clears throat> it's the fact that they put it there because they know they're going to get viewers because they're get a, the viewers. They're a women. Hold on. I think I just found the person I was talking about. Oh no, I didn't. Anyway, but um, the the women who are streaming and they put their face in the thumbnails they don't show their face or whatever or they just flat out can't play the game like i can't complain i can't play games like some games you're pretty fucking trash I, I, no, i'm pretty i'm pretty bad at fortnite I'm pretty bad at fortnite but <clears throat> i i play it because i still enjoy it like the thing is is i feel that like some female streamers know that the audience for fortnite are kids because it's free and mm. when I was a kid, I would go through the app store because this is before I had like a console or anything. I would go through my on my phone on the app store looking for free apps that I might want to you know play or just uh, just have. And I feel like kids this nowadays go through the like the PlayStation Store, Xbox Store, whatever it is, and they look for free games to play because you know they're kids; they don't want to pay for shit. And like you know, mom, can you buy me a sixty dollar game? Mom's gonna be like, hell fucking no. What I find really unfair, and I, I I get it, like I get why it's done, and it's it's unfair. It's it's like a handicap put on us that stream off OBS and through an Elgato and all these other things. But if you look at PS4 streamers, like literally when you click on Fortnite and scroll down on the application itself, it will bring out the top streamer. So it doesn't matter if I've got ten thousand watching and I'm streaming through OBS. But if there's somebody on Fortnite who, on, who's streaming through PS4 who has 200 viewers, they're going to get a fucking boatload of viewers just from people scrolling down mm-hmm. on Fortnite. Like, they accidentally press down on the D-pad and, oh, there's a stream here? Oh, let's watch that. And then they get a bunch of viewers. And I've seen it happen time and time again with multiple streamers. And it's it's cool, but it's like it disadvantages us. And I'm just like, I'm a little bit petty about it, but it's upsetting. <laughs> And it's like, god damn it. Well, PS4 streamers... But that's the thing, like... right? Like, it's a price to pay. Like, you either get the nice overlay of OBS and you get, like, sub pop-ups, donation pop-ups, all these things, or you can stream off PS4 and nine times out of ten hold more viewers. Yeah. Like, what do you... What do you do? You have to, like, choose one or the other. But, um... I guess that probably closes off that topic... Uh, this is, this is a really, this next one, uh, this one hit me hard, really, really, really hard. So, I want to talk about Dr. Disrespect (laughs) and his announcement as Guy Beam, basically. And for those of you who don't know, Guy Beam is who he actually is. He's actually a former, um, map designer for Sledgehammer Games as well, which is quite interesting. They probably should have kept him around considering the maps for World War 2 are complete dog shit. But, yeah, so Dr. Disrespect, anyways, comes out on stream today. Uh, not today, sometime this week, and he's he's going on about how he's been unfaithful to his wife, and he's he's like, I'm going to work on my family, and then ends the stream there. And I've got a lot to say about this. As somebody who has been cheated on, it's it's an awful feeling. It's a fucking awful feeling. It's, it's something that is... It, it crushes you, man. It crushes you. Like, it's really upsetting, and I've been there, and I've thought, like, even months down the line, I'm still like, the fuck did I do wrong? Like, what what did I do wrong? Am I the cause of it? Did I could have done this better. I could have done this better. But the thing is, you don't blame yourself, right? But um, for Dr. Disrespect, to it, it's, it's hard, because it was a streamer that I looked up to, and I, I can see myself a lot in how I act on stream, like, I'm like, oh, well, that's, like, my variation of what Dr. Disrespect does, and all this, and I I looked up to him as a streamer, and I, I... it's so hard right now, because he comes out and cheats on his wife, and I'm very conflicted, like, while I fucking hate cheaters and can't stand them, at the same time, he's one of my favorite streamers. Yeah. It's such a complicated subject, too, just... It is, it is, it's really, really hard to, um... (laughs) to talk about but i think like out of the whole situation i like how he handled it oh yeah 100%. like i have a lot of respect for him just coming on and potentially breaking sponsor deals breaking this that that like he just fucking went fuck this i'm gonna come on i'm gonna let it off my chest i mean i'm assuming like personally that him doing that wasn't him trying to forgive his wife or like him trying to um 
get his wife to forgive him or anything. What I think it was, was he probably couldn't cope with it. Like, he looked very upset, and some people are like, oh, he came on trying to get pity, and I, I don't think that's true. I don't. I think he was um, genuinely upset. Like, he came on and was just like, I need to get this fucking off my chest. Like, I, can't, like, I feel like the worst cunt in the world. So, he came on and just basically said, I'm, I'm fucking ashamed of myself. And that's, that's that. And he announced it. And I, I thought that took a lot of guts to do. Exactly. It, it really does. And I have respect for him. And I think he could make a comeback off it. I do. I think he could come back. I... And he could potentially, like, get bigger than ever. But it's going to be, it's awkward it, because it really depends on how the industry sees him now. Like, now he could, let's say, maybe he doesn't hang out with Optic anymore. Or maybe he doesn't hang out with this other streamer. He doesn't play with Shroud on stream. Like, all these things. Like, all everyone else essentially has the power now. He's not this powerhouse anymore. He's, like, the guy who cheated on his wife. Yeah, like that I, I agree, but at the same time, like, I feel like he has such, like, a, a big following that if he turned up a stream today, he has just as many viewers, if not more, they'd just be toxic in chat. Like, they'd just be fucking um, awful. Yeah and no, because if you look at the chat for when he announced it, a lot of people were like, we still love you, Doc, we're here for you. Like, it was, it was weird, I was like, man, he did cheat on his wife, like, how can you, like, just still... Well... Like, oh, we're here for you. Like, that's hard to... Well, some people, like... Um, I don't know if you know the uh, artist Halsey, I think. Um, she... Oh, I can't say I've heard of him. Uh, it's a girl. Oh, uh -huh. sorry. Yeah, uh, she apparently, like, just got accused of, like, raping one of her friends, like, a couple of years ago. And, like... Yeah. <clears throat> and, like, all of her fans are like, Oh, my God, I don't care that she... No, the, the person who claimed this is lying, you know? The... If the thing is, is I feel like people idolize people, and they kind of have like they put them mm. on this uh, pedestal. Yeah, the pedestal. And yep. this pedestal of power, if you will, um, you're you're unforgivable. You can't sin. You uh, you are the best in their eyes. And so, <clears throat> even with like, you know, I'm not trying to like be an ego or anything like that. But people like in my streams, I can see it. There. That's why I always say like I don't have fans. I don't want to put myself on a pedestal because I know I can do wrong. I've done wrong before. And I want people to know that I'm not someone who's above them. I'm not someone, I, I'm just like them, you know? Um, so I feel like people put these, these like streamers, artists, um, just celebrities in general on such a high pedestal that they forget that they can, they are human, you know what I mean? And they make mistakes. And Doc even says it in his, uh, when he was confessing to it on stream, he was just like, yeah, he's like, it's a stupid fucking mistake. Exactly. And I really respect him for doing that because it's showing all of his viewers. It's showing everyone that, you know, behind the whole Dr. Disrespect persona that he puts on, that he is a person and that he's making mistakes and you have to learn from them, which I feel is kind of his message. I feel, um, because bigger celebrities like, or excuse me, smaller celebrities, like Instagram models and stuff like that, they can go years like with cheating on people and not tell a single person and then it will all come out and it'll ruin their career. And so with him doing that, I feel like it was him kind of like holding it all in and he couldn't do that as a person. And so he had to he had to yeah. he had to come out and say it, which I have high respect for him because um kind of like what you were saying, like I've been cheated on before and no one told me. Everyone knew but me, and that's the worst feeling ever. Is when Yeah, I, I've been there before. Like I I had a best mate and he's like Oh, didn't you know that, like, your ex got with this person? And I'm like, no. And he's like, yeah, man, it was like while you're on your, quote, break. And I, I still consider that cheating, if you ask me. Because, like, they like they got together, like, the second we went on a break. So who's to say they weren't doing things beforehand? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, there's obviously for that to happen, like, the day we went on break and for her to just be like, oh, let's have a break, like, clearly something was there. Um, so anyways, my, my mate told me and I got really, and this is like six months after we broke up and I still got really down in the dumps about it. And he's like, why you broke up six months? And I'm like, I don't fucking care, man. It's, it's the point behind it that upset me. And I think that's the worst thing in the world when like, you know, people don't tell you. Mm -hmm. It's just like, really? Like, am I not, am I not worth knowing? And I, I, it's, it's the thing like, um, 
uh, oh, what what's the expression? There, there's a phrase for it. Um, what you don't know won't hurt you. Mm. And I'm like, nah, fuck that. Like, I'd rather know and be hurt, because then you can at least get over it. Whereas yeah, if you never know, it's like it's pretty much like constantly being laughed at, basically, because it's just over your head. And it's awful. It, it, it's 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 an awful thing to think about. But um, Doctor Disrespect, I think that his career can definitely um, come back for sure. Oh, yeah, and I like I... it the way he came out. See, I personally, though, like, I'm not too worried about his career, because I'm sure he's got plenty to fucking, you know, he's got plenty of money to be stable. Oh, I'm more worried about his family could, and how that goes. Honestly. He could end streaming today and be fine. Exactly. But I, I think like, he is also, like, much more concerned about his family right now, like, and how that's all gonna play that's, out. That's big. He, ha- he has a kid. Like, it's... Exactly. And it's not like and... he just recently got married or anything. Like, yeah, like, I, I'm worried, because you could see it go bad. Like, if, say, the wife leaves him, he might, like, turn to alcohol, and you never know. Like, it could get really bad. Like, he could just disappear off the face of the earth. And obviously, you don't want that to happen. So, hopefully, um, like, hopefully, I don't know, he just turns to the doctor persona and tries to do it well, I guess. Because he did it really fucking well, and I think that's a problem. He did it too well. Um, and it got to him. Yeah, Spencer was talking to me. Um, if you guys don't know who Spencer is, Spencer's my girlfriend. And she really, really likes Dr. Disrespect. Like, when we first started dating, I showed her Dr. Disrespect. And she thought he was hilarious. So that's kind of what got her into, like, Twitch streaming and stuff like that. And so she really liked liked him. And so when she found out that he was cheating, she was just, like, unbelievable and all this stuff. I mean, she she's a whammon. So it probably hit her a little bit harder than most. Um, but uh, she was saying how... Uh, she uh oh, fuck where was it going? oh yeah she was saying how like she thought that maybe like she was that he was at like vidcon or twitchcon um and that he was in this doctor persona and sometimes if you stay in a persona for too long like it, this happens with like undercover cops and stuff like that it becomes a part of you like a second personality yeah it was like second nature to him all of a sudden yeah and so what she thought was like well maybe in his doctor persona or whatever he thought he wasn't married. You know what I mean? And then once that shit happens, it just hits you. Like, he had to realize it. Um, yeah, I think, like, it would have been, like... This is gonna sound fucking funny, but I don't even mean it like that. It's like, when you when you wank into some real weird shit, and then you bust, and you're like, fuck, what do I do? Like, I guarantee you, once he busted his nut in that girl, he's just like... Fuck. What? No. 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 <laughs> shit. Shit. Yeah. He's like, no. No. Fuck, no. And she's like, what? And he's like, I'm a two-time. And she's like, yes, you are. Consecutive years. And he's like, fuck. No. Damn it. And there it is, right there. There there it fucking is, right there. Well, I like, I, I kind of would have, like, I would have agreed with what Hagen was saying if it wasn't for the fact that, like, he was in his persona at the awards show when he talks about how nurse this nurse disrespect was over there looking so goddamn fine. So his persona is married to her as well. Think about it. Well, oh, he said well, yeah, that, nurse, but not miss. Because I I I'm not gonna say that he didn't think he was married. Like he knew he knows he's married. Yeah. That's but I think that um it definitely like just took over him. And it's hard because I can guarantee you that. The girl that got with him would have been some very, very attractive, 10 out of 10, cosplay e-girl that came up with massive boobs, a good ass, like, it, it just fucking, should have been like, oh, hi, Dr. Disrespect, and you gotta think, like, you're walking around one of these conventions, and you're seeing all these, like, 5 foot 10 nerds, that, and some of them are fat, rah, 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 and, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but Dr. Disrespect is literally, like, 6 foot 8, he's a giant, he is, and he's very, like, he's an attractive dude, like, He's he's a god amongst um the the people out in the gaming events, obviously. Like he, you know, he's hard to compare to. So I definitely think, and like it's it's a staple thing too. Like it'd be like, uh, you know, say some girl, like say you're dating a girl, right? I'm sure Spencer has some celebrity crush, for example. Oh yeah. Maybe like that girl was like, oh, I could sleep with Doctor Disrespect. Like you, you know, that's. It's no different. It's no different. Um, and I just think that it's a shitty situation. But uh, he's doing he's doing his best to uh, 
play the cards that he's got and play them well. So hopefully he keeps doing that and we'll see him on the come up once again. But uh, off of that negative topic, I, I want to talk about something that I found really interesting and it's finding happiness. And I had this weird dream today. And it was it was weird. It was really really weird because it was a, it was about a chick. I know, but I don't like her like like in that way. And it was weird because I thought about it and I was like, I haven't really in a long time had that one person who's made me like life is great. Like like I want to wake up in the morning. Like I still want to wake up in the morning, obviously, because I think about food. It's a sad reality, but it's what I think about when I wake up. I'm like, food, fucking, what am I eating today? So, you know, to wake up and think, oh my god, there's that person out there or whatever. Like, I, I don't have that, and I want to find that. But at the same time, I am coming over to America soon. No, I want to slay poon, I'm not going to lie, so <laughs> you know, I want to be single. But, but it's hard, it's hard. It's really, really hard because... I think finding happiness is a hard thing to do. And I seen Boogie2988 um, tweet about it today because somebody was like, oh, who, who the fuck cares if you're depressed? Like, you've got money. You shouldn't be depressed. I'm like, no, that's not true. Like, money... And he, he, he summed it up perfectly. He's like, money does money stops you from being sad, but it doesn't make you happy. Like, it just... Money is pretty much like... It just blocks off all the sad shit that's happening because you can... Say you've got money, you can go out and get food. You could go watch a movie. Like, you can take your mind off what's really going on if you've got the money to. But to be happy... Like, happiness isn't... Like, you know, what car you've got, what, how much money you've got, the house you've got. It's people. It's people. And I've always thought it's been people. Like, if I, for example... I don't know, like, when I when I think of what I what I want in life, it's, I want a family. And I, not yet, not yet, but I would like to have the perfect girl that I, that I, well, perfect for me anyways, that, you know, gets me, we get along, we like the same things. Not all the same things, but we like, you know, similar things, and we get along really well. And we, we're happy together. And that's what I want in life, like, that's, that's what makes me want to be happy. But money no i just i've i've never cared about money and if i cared about money i don't think i'd be doing youtube because people are like oh you want to do youtube as a job and they're like oh well you're not going to make much money off it and i'm like i don't care as long as i can pay my rent every month buy some food and basic necessities that that's fine you know i don't really care if i don't have the money to go buy a lamborghini or you know live in a fucking nice house, like a mansion one day. Like, I, I don't care about that. I really don't. If I want to do what I want to do, I'm going to do it. I don't imagine myself doing any <laughs> other job beside YouTube. The only other thing I could remotely see myself doing is graphic design, and that's because I do thumbnails, and it'd be, like, some element of that. But it'd be, like, it'd be like a shell of doing YouTube. It'd be like, I'm making thumbnails, sort of, but I'm not making the video to go with it. And that had upset me because I like making videos. I do. I really, really, really like making videos. I love streaming and I love all that. And that's because I have the same people come out every day. And that's what makes me really happy to do YouTube. It's not like if I look at 30 viewers, I'm like, ah, oh, well, you know, that's not a thousand. But then I look at who those 30 viewers are and I see that they are the same people every day coming to watch me, taking time out of their day. Like literally we have people like um, Scott Nemer, for example, like every morning they wake up. They have breakfast, they watch the stream. We have Ella, she goes to college or watches the stream on the bus. And then she watches it while she's in college as well, which is just phenomenal. Like, it's phenomenal that we have people taking time out of their day and I've become, like, literally like a television show, basically. Like, a part of their daily routine. Like, you wake up, you watch the news. No, they don't. They, they, they watch me. Like, Or if you were crazy. me over it's the crazy. summer, you'd stay up till three in the morning to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and... It's why my, it's why, I hate to say this, but it is part of why my channel is dead because a lot of my viewers, like 50% of it is, um, like Australian and then like a majority of the other, like 35% or so is from, uh, the U S so it's hard because those time zones don't really clash together too well. So the only time that I'll get my American audience is if I am uploading at 3am or if I have a stream when they are on spring break or something, for example, which makes or summer break or whatever it is that you guys have over there. It makes it very difficult for me to really get anywhere with viewers because I'm like, I can stream now, get all my Aussie and UK audience, or I can stream later at 3am and get my American audience. But I can't really find the perfect time in between because, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, it makes it very difficult, but, <laughs> yeah. but that's um, fine. But I don't know, what do you guys think about happiness? Like, what, what would make you happy in life? Um, I kind of agree with you with the whole, like, people make you happy thing. Um, when I first started doing YouTube, it was just kind of like a hobby. Um, and I would just kind of do it um, because it was something I could do as a creative outlet, something I was kind of interested in. And, like, my friend wanted to do it with me, but then he never, like, took the initiative to do it. So I just started doing it by myself. And so that never really became a source of happiness for me or anything um, until a little bit down the line after my ex-girlfriend broke up with me. Like, this whole deal with her um, that I don't want to get into right now. But um, after that happened, I really started focusing <clears throat> on YouTube. And I, I was... I worked like 12 hours a day as a manager at McDonald's and then I'd go home and I'd stream and then I'd go to sleep like for three hours then go back to work. But like the whole time I was working, I would always look forward to streaming because I would get to talk to these people that, you know, kind of like what you said, what you said always came to the streams and like took the time out of the day to watch me because like I even said this in my video um, that time is the most important thing someone can have or to get to give to someone because you don't get it back. And, mm. and so it's, it's not time is something that can't be refunded. It can't be traded. It's, it's something you give or you take. And on, on that note, um, I want to say that this whole, this whole happiness thing, I found it really weird leaving school mm -hmm. and I, I was fairly upset about it to be completely honest. And while I wake up at like 10, 11 o'clock, I'm like, I didn't have to wake up at seven in the morning and go to school, which is great. But then I think I haven't seen these people in a while. And it's not even the people that I'm friends with. Like it's the other people that I don't see around. I'm just like, you know what? I miss being in that environment of having like, I don't know, a hundred kids in my grade that I, I knew every single one of them. I did. And I didn't get along with some of them. I got along with the... Uh, the majority i did i got along with nearly everybody but it sucks it really sucks because everybody goes their own way which is fine but it's just like holy crap that was such a big part of my life like i'm i'm 18 and i've been going to school with some of these people since i was like four or five years old and now for that to just suddenly like end it's it's mind-blowing it's 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 really really crazy for that to end and it's it's hard because you get into this routine of just going to school, seeing the same people, doing the same thing, learning similar things, like you, you know. And now that school's over, it's it's weird, really, really weird. And nothing's really changed. Like I just sit in my room all day and do YouTube, and that's that's fine. That's what I enjoy doing. But it's. It's so weird. It's so weird. And it's... It's really weird because I never thought I'd find myself getting upset about leaving school. But I find myself getting upset. Sometimes I'm, I'm mostly happy about it. But there are those times where I'm just like, man, I fucking miss it. Like, I miss being able to see my friends every day. And being able to just hear about all the gossip that's going around. And, you know, little things like that. I, I just... And you don't really appreciate it while you're there. That's the thing. Like... For example, I would kill to go back and be in year seven, year eight again, just for, I don't know, a week or so and experience that again. I think that'd be crazy. Or if I could experience primary school one last time, you know, for, um, for a week or so, like if I could go back and do it all again, I definitely would. That's for sure. I think anyone and, would say that where they could go back, but yeah, some people and, would like want to change things. I personally would like to change a lot of things I did. Yeah, I, I definitely would. I when I got to the end of school, like I was I was a fair bit more confident. I still wasn't very outgoing, like I was still a very quiet kid at school. And I wish I was a little bit more outgoing, to be completely honest. And with that being said, I was quiet, but when people found out about like YouTube, it was it was weird because this is when I realized that I really liked YouTube. Because when somebody brought up YouTube, I would just talk the house down for forty five minutes. Like, I just get into the zone and just talk about it. I love it. I don't care. Like, and it, it annoys me when somebody messages me a question and then somebody else messages me a question and I get messaged over and over and over again and have to answer the same thing. But I'll happily talk about YouTube 
10 times to 10 different people a day. Because I love it. Yeah. It's it's weird. I, I really, really love it. And I don't know what it is that I love about it. It's just, it's my thing. I, I don't think it's the games either. Like, you can say, oh, you play games. That's awesome. I don't think that's it. It's it's something bigger than that. It's something deeper than that. It's, it's the, the interaction, coming the out. It's the relation. It's the relationships that you build with people. Exactly. It's the interaction, the support, the community. All of it adds up yeah. to it. Like, if I, like, I think I wouldn't even, I, I, st I still like YouTube, but I wouldn't appreciate it if I just, for example, let's say, I made a video, it popped off, got a million views, and then I make another, ha ha ha, funny video, best moments, it got a million views. Like, if I was one of those YouTubers, I don't think I'd enjoy YouTube as much. And I think with uh, the whole Wilbo interview, this will be interesting, that was the thing with him, like, he built these relationships with other YouTubers but he didn't really have a relationship with his audience, like specific viewers. And I feel as if that's, that, that is another reason that he burnt out, essentially. Because he'd make all these videos, and then once he got sick of playing the game, it was, why am I doing this? Yeah. I'm making money, which is great, but who fucking cares? I could make more money elsewhere. And that's why he left. And I feel as if it's important to build a relationship with your viewers, otherwise you're going to just... What, what is your channel, you know? You upload the video they watch, that's it. It's No, I want it to be something more than that. Yeah, and what, like, so. on the topic of, like, YouTube in general, honestly, with, like, happiness, it sounds like I'm just kind of being, like, a whiny, like, bitch, but, like, I don't know. My, like, ideal, like, place to be would just focusing on my passion, because I, I really do love streaming, and I want this to become a thing eventually. But I can't with school and work in the way and everything. And yeah. then even when we move, I'm going to have to have a job. It's just everything's always in the way. I can't just focus on that strictly. And I think it's like a really big issue when it comes to motivation to do this. Yeah, yeah I was the same when I had school. Like, I'd stream at 6 o'clock and I'd get home from school at 4. So I'd get home at school from 4. And then I'd make a thumbnail. So it was 4.30. Then I'd have a nap for half an hour. It'd be 5. I'd have dinner. And then I'd stream. But by the time I got to said stream, I was, like, fairly just, oh, hey, guys, like, you know. Whereas now when I do a stream, I'm pretty pumped about it, like, nine times out of ten. Like, I'm ready to go because I don't have all these things zapping me. And it's going to be interesting when I move out soon and get a job so I can save up and go to um, the States and whatnot because I feel as if I'm going to feel a little bit more zapped. But it's just managing it, really. Like, hopefully um, YouTube does well enough to the point where I can, you know, not have to work nine till five, five days a week to pay the rent. Maybe I'll do a, you know, like a nine to two kind of thing. And I'll do that three days a week or something. Like if I could do that, that'd be a lot better, but only time will tell. But, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, well, me moving to America. Cause obviously I, I'm <coughs> for you guys who don't know, I'm going to be moving it in with, uh, Hagen and Harley here. So we're going to, and Greg FPS. So, it's going to be really, really good to uh, move over there. And we're going to be moving to LA next October, just before Treyarch's release of their next Call of Duty title, which is very exciting because it's going to hopefully revive our channels. But uh, <laughs> how do you guys feel about the move, firstly? Like um, I said, I mean, I'm fairly stressed about it. But, I mean, maybe Hagen will have some positive things to say. <laughs> I've always been just around a lot. Um... The whole moving aspect doesn't bother me. It's the, uh, what does bother me is doubt. Um, I always have a positive outlook on it, like on anything. Like I remember for ZWC, like, um, or no, not ZWC. When I was at uh, MLG Anaheim, the first time I went to California, I had left my debit card in Texas. And so I had no money. And so I had no way of like getting, uh, getting food or anything, but I had a positive outlook. And so like, but Shane had doubts he was like how are you gonna like stay stay at a place one night and all this stuff but like the thing is, is i had friends who helped me and stuff like that so no and i i don't know if like um any of you guys have doubts i know harley has his doubts like he said he's stressed and whatnot and like he's even said it like on streams and whatnot so like i've, I've told him a couple times that i've been like yo you know don't don't stress i i will help you and like i'm being 100 percent honest i will help you like you guys don't understand like i genuinely like 
care about you guys like to to the core i care about you guys and it's because you've become such a daily like thing for me like you're a part of my life now and like i will do yeah. everything in my power to make sure you guys are like safe you're, you're family to me and so i've i've worked 12 hours and streamed before and i'm thinking about it now if i have to do that to make sure you guys are like safe and stress-free you know make sure you're secured i will do that again I'm, i will do it 100 percent because it will help not only me, but you guys f feel less stress. And I have faith that with YouTube, it will get better, you know, as shitty as it is right now with notifications and everything, you know, and I talk about it on my streams all the time. I have faith it will get better or I will find something better. I think it'll be, I think it'll be better. Like I've seen it happen where I'll have a night where it just does well. I'll get 300 viewers. I'm like, that can happen. It could just turn around one day. It could just bang, boom, because I've seen it happen. And I'm not too worried about it at all. I'm really not. And as for me moving to the States, like I have a fair bit saved up to the point where I can move over there. I can, I can do it. My biggest worry, and it's not even worry, like I'm not worried about it at all, but it's like, it's still a thought, is just the little things that add up because I want to buy a new computer while I'm over there because I don't want to ship mine over here because it's going to be a disaster. Um, so I need to buy a new computer. I need to buy a bed, like... And obviously that stuff over time adds up, but I'm not worried about it because I'm 95% confident that even without a job, with the support I get on YouTube, I honestly think that I could buy myself a new computer and like all the basic necessities I need for America by the time next October rolls around. Now I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm 95% sure it, it can happen. That's kind of a question and... I have for you, by the way. Um... Okay. Okay. So, obviously, like, you can't, like, especially now, you can't, like, say, like, the money you make and everything, but do you think you could afford um, just going over there? Like, not the trip over there, but, like, staying over there, say, like, you didn't want to just stay six months, like, could you afford it without the money you saved up? Like, say, uh, just, like, the money you're making now, do you think you could afford living over there? Uh, uh, probably not. I don't, I don't think I could at the moment. Um, well, I'm saying, like, that's if YouTube wasn't, like, how it is. Oh, if it was, like, how it was six months ago, definitely. 100%. I'd... It would be even better than six months ago because you're such a larger channel now. Yeah, like, like um... That's kind of, like, what's... Like, that's kind of, like, my little <laughs> my little branch of hope here just because, like, it took you a year to get from fucking 1K to 17K. That's a year from now. I'm about to hit 1K. So if I could... Pull the right moves like you did. I mean, and if YouTube like fixes their shit, I I could be fine over there. Like, that's like my one little branch of hope <laughs> that I don't have yeah, to like. Okay. Just I don't know. Like, going to LA is supposed to be like you know it's supposed to be different. It's supposed to be this new thing. But with like things I'd have to do to actually afford over there, I just all I can think about is it being the same is, as right I'm now. Gonna, it's gonna be the same, just a new location. Exactly, and. That's, like, discouraging, you know? <laughs> My thing with going to America is there's a lot of things I want to do over there. Like, I want to go to a football game. I want to see a basketball game. Like, just little things like that. I want to go to, I don't know, the beach. Like, I... And obviously, some of those things cost money. Like, you know, I want to go to Las Vegas and gamble all of my YouTube money. Um, I want to go to... Scratch that last one, actually. I don't <laughs> have any luck in gambling. I always lose all my money. Ne never again. It's cool. But... You know, I, I want to do some of these things while I'm over in America, and it, it costs money, so I need I need to save up. And that's another thing about YouTube is, like, I put my donation thing as January rent. And some people were like, oh, you're asking for rent? And I'm like, well, it's going to get paid regardless, because I'm going to get a job. But I'm just saying that is what it's going to go towards, too. And it's going to help a lot. Like, if, say, the January rent was $400, right? Mm -hmm. If I hit that $400, that means I can take, you know, I could take that week off work. I don't have to do that week at work to hit that $400 because it's already there. So I can focus on streaming. I could make a better video. I could make two better videos. I could do a lot more in that week because I won't have to worry about hitting ends, ends um, meet, basically. And I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be moving in with my sister, and I, and I did that purely because... 
if worst does come to worst, and let's say work doesn't give me shifts, and I don't hit that four hundred dollars, she's just gonna be like, oh, it it doesn't matter. Like you know, I'll let it slide. Whereas if I was by myself, you know, my landlord might be a little bit like, come on, mate. So I can be a little bit lenient with it, which is great. And obviously, I'm still going to try my best, but um, like I, I have like that kind of safety blanket, I guess, mm-hmm. living there. So that's that's part of the reason I want to move. And like the, I'm I'm fortunate enough that the only bill that I actually have to pay right now is my internet bill, which is fine because it's not all that much. Uh, I suppose it is for your guys' standards, but for over here it's not too bad. Um. So yeah, that's that's my whole thing on moving to America. I'm fairly confident it's going to happen. I d- I don't doubt it for a second. It's it's happening. Like there's that's all there is to it. It's it's happening. I agree. Uh, okay, so here, here we go. Here's my last thing we're going to touch on. Uh, goals for 2018. Like, for I, I'm whether it's going into 2018, the end of it, I, I just... 2018. Originally, I wanted to hit 1K before we get to 2018, but then YouTube died, so... Yeah. That's not happening. That. <laughs> Unfortunately. I don't know. My goals for 2017 was to hit 1.5K. And... Mine was 5 yeah, so it's hard to say, like, sub-goal-wise, what you want to be at. I guess, like... Um, I've, I'm going out on a big a big whim here, about 100k, but I realistically see 50k. Mm-hmm. I, I'll be more than happy with that. I will. That's a big number, but I would like to hit 100k. And my reason for that is to get the YouTube plaque. And it's not because I just want the plaque it's a, it's what it represents so what i mean by that is there's been so many people who have told me oh don't do youtube you can't fucking make it rah, 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 rah. but if i could get that plaque i can literally just be like 100,000 subscribers like i've done something to the point where youtube has literally sent me something and been like hey you're doing fucking well See, like, i i kind of feel about that like i watched uh seth like pack puncher's uh, presentation he did today um, like for yeah. a school thing, and it was like, <laughs> if I was like in those shoes, I would just have the cockiest smile on my face because then you're just showing like how much he's grown in the past year, and like, uh, he's like doing this to everyone at school too. So like, I would just have the cockiest smile on my face, like if I was in that oh, position, yeah. like, <laughs> like everyone who's well, like said, oh, that's dumb, and like you tell them about it, and they're like, yeah, okay, and they just don't care, like. It really depends. Like it's a it's a case by case basis because we've even at school. Like, a lot of people I knew, especially in my grade, were very supportive of it. They're like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Like, you know, um, like, they're like, oh, you've got, like, nearly 20k subs. Like, that's a that's a big thing. And then, like, the year under, which was the really toxic group, they're like, oh, you fucking shit cunt. Like, you only get this. Fucking, you got 18k. You don't get 18k people watching. Like, they, they obviously don't get YouTube. But they'd come in and try and rain all over my fucking parade. And I I didn't mind because at the end of the day, half of them work at the local dominoes. And I could sit there and have a stream. And then after the stream, I could order dominoes. And I'd be like, well, man, like I just ordered dominoes and I paid for it by playing games. <laughs> Whereas you're here cutting pizzas up and you're bagging on me for following my dreams and trying to make this a job. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You're cutting pizzas up, cunt. Is that really what you want to do for a job? Oh, well, well of course not. I'm like, I'm following my like, fuck off, cunt. Like, don't tell me what I can and can't fucking do. And it's funny because um, a lot of those kids, and I've seen it in time and time again, like, I literally, when I hit 10,000 subscribers, I remember this kid I didn't like, he messaged me, apologized to me, and he said, you're killing it. And I'll never forget that. I, I won't forget that because it, it hit me. It did, and I was just like, huh. Eh funny that <laughs> and it was like how people change yeah um and yeah i found it really funny but i used it as like a um as a platform i was like all right well you know I'll, I'll keep going i'll keep doing my thing and i could never quit youtube i just don't i could never do it i look not at my sub count but i look at the people coming out and how disappointed they'd be if i ever went anywhere i couldn't do it like the the people who come out they, they are family they are family and it's that's something I couldn't leave behind. I I couldn't do it. I'd f- I'd feel lost without YouTube. I'm not gonna lie. Like I'd, I'd be I'd work that nine to five, get home. Oh, I suppose I'll play some games, and then I'd play the game. I'd be like, 
This isn't the same. Like, my life. <laughs> so, you know, I'd be like, this, it's not right. Like, what am I, what am I doing? Am I doing what I love? No, I'm working some shitty job to meet a payment. And then, you know, if I'm lucky, I might meet someone and we might have fun together. But I've left YouTube behind, like, you know, am I doing something I'm happy, happy? No. I'm not. I'm leaving something behind that I genuinely enjoy and find happiness out of. I don't want to do that. You'd be a fucking idiot too. You don't. Exactly. You don't be happy with something and just fucking leave it. No. You know who does that? Well, you want to know? <laughs> no. Cunts who have sex with socks on. <laughs> and as Chopper says, you don't have sex with socks on. <laughs> so, all right. Good old Chopper always come, comes in clutch. But yeah, fucking. That, that's that's my whole thing on the 2018 goals. If you guys have anything to say about it, let me know. I want to try and like make less mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes this past year, not just with YouTube, but with personal uh, relationships. Not just like dating or anything, but just. Oh yeah, I've made some big mistakes. <laughs> yeah, I want to try and understand. I just want to understand people a little bit more. Um, I understand people, but, like, I don't give a fuck what they've got to say. Yeah. Like, somebody will be like, oh, like, there's ten genders, and I'm like, I respect your opinion, but you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my problem, because I go that extra step that I, I know I shouldn't go, but I'm like, nah, you're an idiot, you, I'm gonna go it, like. And I do, I do, and I shouldn't do it, because it causes conflicts. Like, I've had things where I'm like, I shouldn't say this. But I'm going to say it. Like, I had a mate who was getting led on by a girl. And I did a cruel-to-be-kind thing where I basically exposed the girl. Which made the girl hate him. But he got over her. And I look back on it and I'm like, was that the best decision I made? Like, you know, I kind of stepped in and ruined what they had. But he was legitimately sad because he liked her and she didn't like him back. But she was leading him on. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a hard situation. I look at that and I'm like, I probably could have done that better. And that's the thing. Like, you can look back at anything and be like, I could have done that better. I should have done that. If I did this, it would have caused this. Like, you you know, this domino effect. But you you can't you can't really worry about it. You just look. You look at it, and you learn, and then you apply to the next time. Hundred percent. Exactly. Or you fuck up again. <laughs> you live, you learn. Fool me once, shame on whatever. Yeah. Fool me twice, and I'm just a brain dead cunt. <laughs> yeah, more on you. That's, that's it. That's fucking it. That's it. Um, Alright, well, if you guys don't really have anything else to say, I mean, unless you do. Subscribe to Hemi King. <laughs> God damn it, this cunt's gonna pass us and subs just for self promotion. <laughs> the but... meme lives. Alright, well. <laughs> That's that's going to wrap up the first episode of the Insert Name Here podcast. Um, that's not the actual name. I just don't have one yet, but we'll figure it out. Uh, all right, so we went for about... Jesus, we went for nearly an hour there for the first episode. That's So that's fairly good. Let me know how you guys feel about that length. I feel as if it's perfectly fine. Probably just going to get a little overlay. I've got, I've got something planned. Uh, but let me know how you guys feel about this podcast. I'd like to see a lot of support for it. So if you guys did enjoy it, even a little bit, Make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe if you guys are new. We're going to turn this into a weekly thing. I figured we'd just have three people on for the start, the regular people, and we're going to be getting in sponsors for next week as well, which is going to be awesome. We're going to work out a time to record and whatnot and a time to upload it every week. But anyways, guys, that's been the podcast. If you guys enjoyed, once again, shout out some love and support, and I will see you guys in the next video.